From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello. Sorry to scare off your caller, Ben. You always answer other people's phones, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, when it's right at my elbow, and when I want to find out who's calling at this time of night. Did you find out? I think so. I know of only one person in the township who'd probably hang up when they heard my voice. And uh, who you reckon that'd be, Mr. Dollar? Millie Wells, Jed. Who else? I think you'd better leave Millie out of this if you don't mind. I can understand your concern, Ben, but I'm afraid I can't go along with it. Your wife has been murdered. Gossip around town says you and Millie have been interested in each other. And Millie stood trial four years ago on a charge of murder. Add it up, Ben. Add it up. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Shady Lane, Vermont... To the home office, Star Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Shady Lane matter. Expense account continued. It was a messy case, hard to move around in. A small community, and everybody in it was a neighbor or friend of everybody else. Except, of course, the unknown person who had murdered Ellen, Ben Bates' invalid wife. But the ties were close. Ellen, it turned out, was the niece of Constable Jed Bramler. And Sarah Preeny, next-door neighbor, had accused Ben of carrying on with waitress Millie Wells, who was a good friend of Constable Bramler. And Sarah Preeny's husband had helped Ben out of a jam by loaning him $7,500 on a worthless farm. Yeah, it was sticky and tight and uncomfortable. Touch one domino and you moved all of them. But the key to the game, I was still convinced, was Ben Bates himself. Yeah, you're wrong, Mr. Dollar. I've known Ben here for more years than I care to think about. Murder just ain't in his nature. Mr. Bramler, I think you're just too close to this case to keep a perspective on it. I know these people, and you don't. Well, that's exactly the point. Ben is your friend. He was married to your niece, so you just can't imagine him committing a murder. It ain't in his nature. Oh, I've never seen a killer yet without at least a few friends who were certain that murder wasn't in his nature. Now listen to me, both of you. It's not a question of my nature. It's a question of fact, and the fact is a plain and simple one. I didn't kill Ellen, Mr. Dollar. A lot of things say different, Ben. And there's nothing at all between me and Millie. If Ellen had lived, I'd have never spoken to her. As it is, I've only asked her if I could see her sometime, once this thing is all settled. Uh, Well, you're together, at least. That's about what she told me. We're together because it's the truth, Mr. Dollar. Or because you've already talked it over. One fault I haven't got is lying. Not even about your rifle being stolen? Oh, well, it wasn't no actual lie... When Jed here asked me if I had a squirrel gun, I said no. And like I told you, I didn't then. It had already been stolen. Suppose he'd asked you if you had a squirrel rifle. Well, I reckon I'd have had to fess up to it. Well, we'll never know, of course, for sure. But one thing is sure. After your wife was shot and killed by a gun of that same type, you still didn't report to the constable here that yours had been taken. Well, I I explained it to you. How would it have looked... If I'd have told him after Ellen was shot that my old squirrel gun had been stolen before. And you didn't report the theft when it happened because Ellen asked you not to. Is that the story? She thought she knew who took it. She wanted a chance to get it back without causing them trouble. And of course she's not here now to back you up on that. It's the truth. She was like that. Jed here, I'll tell you. Kind-hearted and tolerant with people. Yeah, she was that all right. It's a fact. If either Mrs. Preeny or Grody Hawkins took it, and they're the only ones that was here that week... Then she was aiming to talk to whichever one it was and get it back without bringing the law in. Only she never had the chance to. She was killed. Yeah. Yeah, and that gun figures in it somehow. It's bound to. Look, we've got to find it, Mr. Bramler. Might take some doing. Then we'd better get at it. Tonight? Tonight. We got things stirred up now. Let's keep them stirred up. All right. Ben, you claim you're not guilty of this. It ain't a claim. It's a fact. Then who would you say is the most likely suspect? Ellen didn't have a single enemy in this world, as far as I know. There ain't a person in this township that had a reason to kill her. Except you. For the money, you mean? For that life insurance policy? It's worth $10,000. And I'm that kind, you think? 
A man who'd murder his own wife just to get his hands on $10,000. Ben, I don't know. But there's one thing you can count on. I'm going to find out. Constable Bramler and I left Ben alone in his empty farmhouse, drove back into town. The moon was higher now, and the countryside was dappled in black and silver. And it, too, was empty and silent. We alone moved and made noise as we rattled down the winding dirt road through the flint rock valleys between the sleeping elms and maples. Logic still pointed at Ben Bates, but I'd begun to doubt logic a little. Ramler was right. Murder didn't seem to be in Ben's nature. And I wasn't sure now whether he sat there in his silent house alone with guilt or alone with grief. Brody lives back of the feed store there. What do you mean, back of it? Well, kind of a shack there on the back corner of the lot. They let him live in it in return for keeping an eye on the store at night. Yeah, quite a choice for a night watchman, a kid who's been up several times for petty theft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I reckon it does seem a bit odd. Well, let's go see if he's there. You know, folks around here use a person according to his nature. Grody is pretty reliable at something he's made responsible for. And why do you think he might have stolen that squirrel rifle from Ben Bates' place? He was working for Ben, wasn't he? Well, uh, but just as a hired hand, he wasn't hired specially not to steal. But here he is. Oh, now, that's a fine point of ethics. Well, most points of ethics is that way. Reckon Grody just does honorary things sometimes so people will notice him, take an interest in him. He's a little simple-minded, but he ain't a bad kid at heart. Is anybody bad in your book, Mr. Bramler? Whoever killed Ellen Bates is... Watch step now. It's pretty dark back here. Yeah. Hope nobody has dug a hole here someplace. Ain't likely. No, I think the door is here by the corner somewhere. If I recollect rightly. It's been a long time. Watch it. You all right? <sighs> Bruised machines all. Now, who in the Sam Hill put all these boxes in front of the door? Here? You stop right there now. Don't you move. He's got a rifle on us. All right, don't try nothing, Mr. Dollar. Like I told you, he's a dead shot. What you whispering about there? Uh, never you mind, Grody. You just put that gun down. I'll put it up. Don't you move now. Let me, let me get my flashlight. It's Jed, Grody. Constable Bramler. Mr. Dollar's with me. You stand still till I get a light on you. And then we'll see. Thank golly, it is. Yes, didn't you recognize my voice? Never can tell. People might try something funny. Try to break in. Something like that. Well, now that you know who we are, Grody, how about having a look at that gun you're holding on us? Well, I don't know. I guess if Constable Bramler says it's all right... It's all right, Grody. Let him look at the gun. All right, then. Here. Thanks. Mind holding the flashlight here? All right. Well, at least this isn't the one. It's a twenty-two. What are you fellas up to, anyhow? Grody, what did you do with that squirrel rifle you took from over Ben Bates' mantle? Well, Grody? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't. Anybody says I've done that is lying. Nah, nah. Don't get excited, Grody. We don't want to wake up this whole town while we're walking across there. Where are we going, Constable? Over to the city jail. <laughs> hmm. Quiet night. Not even a mockingbird singing out there. I wish that bird back in the cell would do some singing. Yeah, he will. Always gets to bothering him after he's in for a while. Thirty minutes hasn't bothered him much. He'll talk pretty soon. Provided, of course, he has anything to talk about. I know that boy inside out. Now, whether he stole that gun or not, he's lying about something. <laughs> I'm going to have to buy some oil one of these days. Doggone chair even gets on my nerves. <laughs> I don't think anything gets on your nerves, Mr. Bramwell. Well, the country up here has that kind of influence, I reckon. These hills are older than man. They've seen a lot of things come and go. Guess they kind of quiet a person down if he stays here long enough. I doubt if this place is as quiet as it looks. I think there are things under the surface like flint rocks in a field, and sooner or later they work to the top and break off a plowshare. Yeah, happens sometimes. Isn't there anyone you can think of who might have hated her, even slightly? Mr. Dollar, if I was to say honestly who I thought was the best-liked person in this whole township, I would have to name my niece, Ellen Bates. 
And yet somebody put a bullet through her head and fired at her from the brush without even any warning. It's a fact. There had to be a lot of hate behind that bullet. Or a lot of greed. <laughs> Same old tune, eh? Ben killed her for the insurance. I keep coming back to it because nothing else makes any sense. And neither does that. He owed that mortgage to Martin Preeny, and the farm wasn't worth it. Martin wasn't pressing him for it. Maybe not. But if I tag Ben right, he still felt the obligation, the sense of pressure. $10,000 must have looked pretty big to him. Not that big, Mr. Dollar. Then there's Millie Wells, pretty as a picture and in love with him. And an invalid wife at home. Well, our pigeon's starting to chirp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let him think I ain't coming right away. He gets more anxious. Saves time in the long run. Matter of understanding his nature, huh? Something like that. Constable Bramler? What about your nature, Mr. Bramler? Always was kind to my mother. And your niece, too. Meaning? How did you and Ellen get along? Fine. Just fine. Constable! Hmm. Reckon he must be ready to talk now. <laughs> It's true. I was lying about it. I stole that gun, all right. But I ain't got it now. Where is it, Brody? I sold it to Mr. Martin Preeny to hang in his house. Martin Preeny? Yeah, can't figure Martin paying money for something to hang in the house. He's too tight-fisted. He gave me $4 for it about three weeks ago. That would be after Ellen was shot. And you took the gun the week before the murder. I... Are you saying that I shot Miss Bates? That gun was in your possession at the time, Grody. Oh, she was the best friend I ever had. The only one in this town that ever treated me like somebody. I wouldn't have done nothing to hurt Miss Bates. You had that gun, the same kind she was killed with. Oh, that gun ain't been fired in years. What? Well, Mr. Bates never did use it. Well, it's even got rust inside the barrel. Grody, for your sake, I hope it has. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, one domino tips, the whole stack tumbles, and the last man falls with a crash. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.